I'm Christopher Purdy, the president of DKT International, and it's my pleasure to introduce you to Phil Harvey, a visionary, pioneer, and titan in the world of social marketing. Phil, along with Tim Black, co-founded Population Services International, PSI, then founded DKT International, and has sat for many years on the board of Mary Stopes International, MSI. All three organizations have had a tremendous impact on the family planning, reproductive health, and general well-being of millions of people globally. I first got interested in family planning in India way back in the 1960s. I was there with CARE on a school feeding and preschool feeding lunch program and we were importing massive amounts of American so-called surplus food, uh, a policy that turned out to be not a very good one. Uh, but the school feeding program uh, was well managed and went on uh, fairly well, but we realized um, that every year we were feeding more of these kids and every year we were further behind. Uh, India was growing in population quite rapidly then and particularly growing in population of children. Uh, so that it became fairly clear to me in the process of, of feeding kids that if we wanted to help in a way that would be more permanent and more, uh, more real in terms of being useful to Indian citizens, uh, family planning uh, would be a much more sensible approach. Social marketing was a part of the discussion that was going on in India by a group at the Indian Institute of Management in Calcutta, spearheaded by a Ford Foundation fellow named Peter King. And they were working on an idea, which was brand new then, uh, to use the commercial infrastructure and commercial techniques. Uh, they, they studied, for example, Brook Bond Tea's distribution. Brook Bond had its tea in something like 200,000 Indian shops. I mean, it was everywhere. And the team uh, looked at this, they said, why shouldn't contraceptives be available in just as many shops as Brook Bond tea? And that was the origination of the idea for social marketing. There's a particular advantage to the social marketing approach that I personally uh, found and continue to find particularly satisfying, and that is it doesn't help people in ways that generate gratitude and differences between the giver and the receiver. I'll tell you a quick story about how that first became uh, noticeable to me. When I was working with CARE in, in India, one of my jobs was to supervise emergency relief food distribution, and I was working in a very flood-devastated area in Punjab in North India, and mothers and their children were lined up, obviously poor and desperate people uh, who had very little access to any kind of food. We were uh, storing and uh, cooking and arranging for food to be distributed and all of a sudden uh, a woman in a ragged sari left her kids in the line, came out of the line, ran up to me, knelt down at my feet and touched her forehead to my shoes. I was shocked. I didn't know what to say or do and subsequently uh, over the ensuing months I, I simply came to the conviction that however we were going to help people, by God, we were going to do it in such a way as not to create this, this uh, disparity between uh, the, the giver and the recipient, the, not to generate gratitude. I felt and I feel now that when we help our fellow human beings, we should not do it in such a way as to generate gratitude. Social marketing is particularly well designed for this because when you're selling a subsidized product through a commercial distribution system, the customer uh, is an equal. The customer parts with, a, with, with his or her own money, not very much, sometimes just a bit, but they make a purchase of what looks like a commercially available product in the marketplace. They're equal to the storekeeper. They give a little bit of money, the storekeeper gives them a product, the deal is done, nobody is superior to anybody else, nobody needs to be grateful to anybody else. It works just fine that way. PSI was created in roughly 1969. 
in North Carolina, and its fundamental purpose was to promote family planning and branded contraceptives through the social marketing mechanism. We thought it would be easy to get funding for such an approach. Uh, Tim uh, uh, said several times, we'll be selling enterprise to enterprise, uh, that USAID couldn't possibly not support <laughs> A, um, a family planning program that was based on the free enterprise system. Well, it was not easy to get the first small grants, um, but the basic idea finally began to take hold. Uh, Tim ran the first social marketing program in Kenya, which was carefully measured, quite successful. The uh, approach was what is now classic social marketing, market research, advertising campaign, and distribution through commercial distributors who were handling other pharmaceuticals, analgesics, and, and those kinds of things. We created DKT with some specific uh, differences. First of all, by that time, we had learned some things about social marketing that made it even more uh, interesting and compelling from my point of view the commercial approach was turning out to, to be self-reinforcing to some extent. Uh, the programs involved advertising, for example, and program managers were having a very good time. It's kind of fun to uh, work on advertising campaigns for products that you know are helping people. So we founded DKT as a social marketing specialist, as welcoming the challenges of abortion and abortion reform and abortion counseling. At that time, PSI was heavily dependent on USAID, and even though the Mexico City policy didn't apply to PSI as a U.S. organization, they were still very wary about getting involved with abortion and abortion-related activities. So one of the differences with DKT uh, was that we would walk right into that issue and, uh, and be fairly aggressive about it. And DKT now provides, uh, through social marketing indeed, now that medical abortion drugs are available, a good deal of, of abortion service through marketing and advertising of uh, medical abortion medications. In the 1970s, apart from our focus uh, internationally, which we had all along, we looked around for barriers to access to contraceptives in the United States. And here were a bunch of laws in the state of New York that stated uh, contraceptives, in this case referring mostly to condoms, uh, can only be sold in pharmacies. Condoms cannot be sold to anyone under the age of 16. Uh, and no contraceptives can be advertised by anyone for any purpose uh, whatsoever. Uh, it seemed to us that restricting uh, the availability of contraceptives in that way uh, was constitutionally frail. Uh, the lawyers we consulted agreed that there were some due process issues here. There had been a couple of Supreme Court cases guaranteeing people the right to, to birth control. Uh, so we sued. Uh, the case ended up in the Supreme Court, and uh, very satisfactorily, the Supreme Court justices ruled uh, seven to two that New York State's law was unconstitutional. It was abolished, and access to contraceptives improved. We demonstrated to the world, indeed the entire world, that this method of social marketing, this method of providing birth control through the commercial networks and infrastructure is effective, it works, it goes to scale, it's very cost effective, the cost per couple of year of protection is two, three, four dollars as opposed to much more expensive approaches. Social marketing of contraceptives is going on I think in 60 or 70 countries the combined total of social marketing beneficiaries just for contraceptives now, I'm not talking about social marketing of anything else, over 70 million couples. That means that social marketing is providing birth control to something like 10% of all the couples in the developing world, excluding China. It's a major contribution and I would be uh, delighted to be remembered for having at least demonstrated that that approach uh, is effective, that that approach works. 
I would have to say that I am proudest of our achievement in Bangladesh, but what took place there was that an entire generation of Bangladeshis, and this goes way beyond any birth control that we've accepted here in the United States, uh, grew up taking the availability of Raja condoms for granted. Five-year-old kids would be sent down to the, the Panwala to buy a package of Raja condoms for his parents, and nobody thought anything about it. You couldn't do that in the United States. It was a situation where the messages that we were promulgating transformed the culture with respect to family planning, birth control, contraceptives, completely from an unknown, it wasn't taboo, in a way that may have made it easier. Uh, uh, contraceptives weren't taboo because there weren't any to speak of, and it, it simply became natural for there to be condoms in every store and pills in every pharmacy, and it is no coincidence that uh, contraceptive use overall has gone up and birth rates have come down and the social marketing program uh, was so uh, uh, demonstrably successful. I, I still feel uh, very, very proud of that achievement. A personal and as a moral issue, family planning is a big winner. Uh, the ability for parents to control the number and timing of pregnancies and births is an enormously liberating phenomenon. We saw 50 years ago, 40 years ago, a world in which most women were virtual slaves to their fertility, to their repeated pregnancies, making it possible for women especially to become free of that burden, to decide when to have children and how many children to have, uh, is an enormous advance in, in human rights. And it multiplies uh, with its impact on family economics. Time after time after time we hear from parents who said, now I can spend enough money to educate my children. In most of the world, most poor people educate their children in private, very inexpensive private schools at least part of the time. And education it becomes possible when you have three kids instead of seven. So that the impact of giving people the right to control their own fertility uh, is very, very significant. Uh, anyone who opposes it is a fool, and probably an evil fool at that, it seems to me.